Wouldn't it be amazing if we could have different font types, sizes, and colors on the same line? Well, you might think that must be straightforward. However, it's not possible unless you work with multiple text boxes, which is not ideal. However, now from the March 23 version, we have titles and subtitles. And with a little trick, we can achieve exactly that. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas. If this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now, let's have a look at the titles and subtitles feature, which we can use to get different font types, sizes, and colors on the same line. Now, for this, you need to be on the March 23 version, and then you have access to the titles and subtitles feature in the formatting. Now this feature you could, for example, use to integrate KPIs in a very elegant way into your visualizations without having to need extra text boxes, which I show in this video over here. However, what we are gonna do now is to build the following example, where I have a little table right next to a line chart. And what I want to achieve is that I can just click on a certain product and then all of that product information shows here in the top right corner. And you see that we have still a normal title here on the left hand side. And this is on the same height. Now, how to achieve that? How can we have different fonts, different font colors or types on the same line in the visual without using extra text boxes? Okay, now let's get started. All right, here I have that visualization without that dynamic title integrated. So that's going to be our starting point. Let's select it and let's go to the formatting pane. Now, I'm in the new version, so I have to click there on formatting, more options, and this brings us to the formatting pane here on the right hand side. Maybe it's a small little trick. At the beginning, I just always go now to view, toggle all of them open, and then we have all of these buttons here on the right hand side, which then lets me switch between all of the main panels. All right, good. So now that we have here the formatting options, you see we have here title, under which we find title and subtitle. Now, here for the title, we can, for example, say, this is my total sales. Good. And then for the subtitle, let's turn it on. And you see, we have now a nice little subtitle underneath it. Now, that subtitle, I want to make dynamic so that it shows information about the selected product. Now, for that, we need to make use of conditional formatting. There's a little FX button. So let's write a measure that returns the name of the selected product, the category, a subcategory, and the manufacturer. Now, this is fairly easy. Huh? So we go over here to the data panel, and then here I'm going to add a new measure. Now let's give this measure the name title product info. Okay, now here we can work with variables. Huh? So we can say, okay, we have a variable for the product name. And to get the product name, well, I only want to show it when we have one selected. So selected value only returns a value when there's one selected. And this is going to be the product name that I want to see. All right. Then we are going to do the same thing for the subcategory. So let's say we have subcategory. And also here we can make use of the selected value function and we return the subcategory name. Now, the last one, that's going to be, let's say, the manufacturer. And here we have then again the same function and we want to return the manufacturer. Now, good. Then we have the subtitle variable, which is going to be the combination of these three. So we can just say we want to have the product subcategory and we have the manufacturer. Okay. And then because we are working with variables, we need to say return and we want to return the subtitle. Good. Now this measure we can then use for our subtitle. Now, if I go over here to the formatting panel and select the visualization, then we can go here to titles, subtitles. Now it's already on. We just have to click there on the conditional formatting button. And here we can say that the field value is then the measure that we just wrote, title, product info. Okay. Now at the moment it doesn't show anything because none of the products has been selected. But if I select over here one of the products, you see we have all of that information showing in one line, but I want to have it split over multiple lines. So we can go back to our measure. Now here we can create another variable and let's call this one new line and a new line we can create with unicar time. 
All right, now let's just copy the name of the variable and let's go here to our subtitle. And here we can then say that we want to have the product and then after it, a new line. And then we return the subcategory and then at the end, we have new line so that we go to the next one and then over here, manufacturer at the end. Okay, and then we return the subtitles. Okay, now you will see that we have here that subtitle split over multiple lines, but I want it to maybe be on the right hand side because now it looks a little bit cramped there in the top left corner of the visualization, which is maybe not that nice. So let's go to formatting and then we have here size and style and then we have here title and then here the subtitle I want to have on the right hand side and let's maybe make it cursive just like this. Now you see it's not perfect yet and it also well, overlaps or goes underneath the line chart itself. So we have to make some adjustments and very important. It's well, it's not on the same line. We lose a little bit of space there, which is not ideal. So now the trick, what we can do is instead of saying we use the title for the title and subtitle for subtitle, we could actually turn them around. I'm going to use the subtitle for the title and title for the subtitle. And you will see why. Let's go back again to the formatting options for the chart. And here to the title settings. And I want to have the subtitle showing the title. Okay, so I'm going to undo what we just did, clear it again. And I'm gonna call this one total sales because I want that to be my main title. And over here, we're gonna go for the same formatting options as for the normal title. So we have as a font, then we have font size 14 and we have text color black. Okay, and then we put it here on the left hand side and make it non cursive. Okay, now it looks the same. And now we go to the title, which I want to make my subtitle. Okay, so over here, I want to have the font type. Well, that is Segui, so Segui UI. And here the font size, I'm gonna put it to 10 and I want it to be on the right hand side. We had cursive before and this is how I want it to be. However, we need conditional formatting to show the product info. So let's go again to the title, click here on FX. And here uh, for the field value, we choose that measure that we just wrote, product info. Okay. Now you will see when I make my selection, we see the product info, but again on one line. Didn't we fix that before? Well, yes, but the Unicard term gets deleted when text wrap is on. So if I go back over here, to the title and here I turn text web off only then it gets split over multiple lines. And now the interesting part, because you see we have the product information in the top right corner of the visualization and here somewhere in the middle, we have total sales, but I want it to be on the same height, on the same level. Now to get it at the same level, what we do is we go back to a measure so over here we have title product info and here we can push our text for the subtitle a little bit down with the new line variable. So new line, new line, and we want to combine that with what was already there. And then the same thing here at the end, maybe to well create a little bit of extra padding, extra space there as well. And when we do this, still nothing really changed. And that is because the leading spaces and training spaces and also the unicar that's at the beginning and at the end disappears. Okay. And that is not solved with text wrap. For that, we need again, a different workaround. So a little trick, let's go back again to a measure. And then here, right in front of it, we need to put an extra space. However, that space will be deleted. So I cannot just write it like this. What we need is something that looks like an empty character. So I usually just Google it quickly. And that brings me to a website like emptycharacter.com. And from here, if you scroll down, you can just copy it to, to the clipboard, go back and then just paste it in there between the quotation marks. And that is what we also need. Then here at the end. And now it does get pushed down and we have the total sales more or less at the same height as that product information. Now, we have to do a little bit of adjustment. Uh, so over here, we can go back to the visualization and then formatting options. And then here we have the title and you see for the title and for the subtitle, we have spacing, spacing options. You customize the spacing over here 
you can say, okay, how much space do we want to have below the title, below the subtitle? Now, if I make this lower, you see the main title goes up and we can make it perfectly aligned with the product information that shows on the right hand side. Now let's test what we have so far. So I'm going to click here on one of the products and you see it nicely updates that line chart right next to it. Okay, perfect. But you also see with this one, for example, that that well, marker that we have there at the top kind of gets cut. Okay, now this is generally a problem that Microsoft wasn't able to solve just yet. However, what we can do is also here use a little bit of conditional formatting to make sure that that doesn't happen and also to make sure that uh, there's no line that goes underneath or over our subtitle there, right? So we kind of want to avoid that as well. And maybe let's turn the grid lines off. Uh, so maybe you don't like it that the grid lines go all the way to there. So I'm going to go over here to grid lines. Let's turn them off first. Okay, now then we need to have a measure that figures out, okay, what is the maximum there? And on that basis, maybe uh, add a little bit of extra padding there at the top. So I'm going to go over here add a new measure and let's call this one Y axis max. And here I want to iterate over all of the year months because that is what I have on the horizontal axis that you can do with a function that returns the following table over here, all selected. And we want to see, well, first of all, we have the year, we have the month, and we have also the month number, which sorts the month column, and that one and we also want to include. Okay, so over here, we iterate over that table, and then we have the expression. And the expression for this visualization is the total sales. Okay, now here we don't want to take the sum, we want to have the maximum. Okay, so what does the measure do? It iterates over a little table that gets returned by all selected, all selected gets rid of any filters from the visualization itself, but keeps the one from outside of the visualization, calculates for each year month the total sales, and of these aggregated values, it returns the maximum. That's it. All right. Now, then we need to say, okay, how do we want to adjust then that y-axis? Now, what we could do is we wrap this inside of a variable or store it, in it inside of a variable. Let's call it uh, max sales. All right. And then over here, I have my var y axis max, which is going to be equal to, well, the max sales, but we want to multiply it maybe with 1.3, uh, which stretches the y axis a little bit further. Okay, and that's it. And so over here, that is what I want to return, that y axis max. And that is then the measure that we can use to set the maximum for the y axis. Okay. Now that is a formatting option. So let's go to the visualization, formatting, y-axis. Now over here we have the minimum. Let's put the minimum to zero and the maximum we will turn with conditional formatting. So field value and then here matrix, then here y-axis max. And you see the visualization, the plot area gets pushed down a little bit, right? We have more space here at the top, which makes it look maybe a little bit cleaner as you can see. All right. Okay, so now that we have solved that problem as well, it's time for the finishing touches, which is just, well, the padding over here on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side. So let me take the visualization. Let's go to size and style. And then here we have padding. And here I want to have on the right-hand side, the left-hand side, 20 pixels. So over here we have 20. Then over here we have 20. And over here we have 20. Now, why don't I want to have any padding at the top? Because, well, over here, there is already a little bit of padding, even if we set it to zero. And that is because well, the title is there at the top, right? Remember what we did? We took the title, which is what shows here now in the top right corner, okay? We aligned it to the right, and then we pushed it down. And therefore, there's what looks like empty space, but it's basically a placeholder for the title, which we use now as padding. And that is already the whole trick. We have now different font types, sizes, and colors, on the same line. Now, of course, a little bit of a workaround and it would be better if we could set the color like an Excel with a formatting string. So you could use maybe the format function and then inside of that formatting string also determine the color. That would be nice. 
And if you would take that a step further, maybe even the font size and font type. All right, now let me know your thoughts. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos like this one, then check out these videos over here. Thank you for watching and see you next time.